folks. His first novel is The Bones, and this is the second one, Shining City, which is being made into a movie by Warner Brothers. He's, uh, he's a, a writer on uh, HBO uh, series uh, Big Love, and uh, Book Soup has got a bunch of copies of this, and um, Rachel's book as well at the front of the club, so afterwards, uh, please buy... Say that again? It's playing at the Fountain Theater. That is. No, that's that's something else. That's an Irish play about oh. a bunch of drunks in a bar. It's an entirely different project. Look at that. So you make a statement like that and get an answer just like that. Well, it's, it's a Wait, different thing. This is very different. Yes. Yes. I'll tell you about that. it in a minute. So Seth will explain it all. Yeah. Why don't I come up and explain yeah, it? Yeah, yes. so you Seth and your son. And it's done. Woo! Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, this is a novel I wrote called Shining City. It's uh, the very touching story about a middle-class guy who becomes a pimp. <laughs> it's uh, for young readers. <laughs> uh, I'll be accompanied by my son Gabe on the bass. Um, at the center of this story about the, this middle-class fellow who becomes a pimp in order to support his family is uh, the very touching tale of a marriage. And the three short scenes I'll be reading today track that, that marriage. Well, he becomes a successful pimp in the uh, ensuing moments before the final scene, and he decides to, to ratchet things up another notch. In their room on the 10th floor overlooking the Hollywood Hills, a nearly empty bottle of Pinot Grigio rested in a silver bucket. They're in a hotel, by the way. The blinds were only partially closed, so while half the room was lit with the afternoon clig of the sun, the two of them lay beneath the covers, luxuriating in the shadows. The wine had tucked in their inhibitions, kissing them goodnight, and Marcus sensed the timing was propitious. He produced a gleaming silver egg. Jan regarded it curiously. What's this? It's an egg. I can see that it's an egg, Marcus. What does it do? You're supposed to put it, you know, excuse me, down there. No. Mm-hmm. And then it vibrates. Really? That's what the instructions say. Where'd you get it? I bought it on the internet. Amstel had given it to him a week earlier, one of the girls who works with him. But he didn't think one small lie mattered, given the major ones he'd been telling lately. Jan held the object in her fingertips, examining it in the light. She eyed it with drunken concentration. Before Marcus had to launch into a sales pitch, it vanished into her nether region like a magic trick. <laughs> what happens now, she said brightly, game. Thrilled by her willingness to play, Marcus showed her what looked like a television remote control. What's that? He pressed a button on the device. Jan nearly swooned. <laughs> oh, God, Marcus, oh! She breathed evenly as the hidden egg pulsed, sending powerful vibrations coursing through her body. This is, oh! It's got ten settings, he said, thoughtfully. <laughs> Which one is it on? Her voice was shaky, a passenger on a heaving ship. The first. You're, oh, kidding. Marcus pressed the button again. Oh, Marcus, oh, God. That's three. Her orgasm approached like a drunk trying to beat last call. <laughs> Barreling, arms waving. Her eyes were closed, her head thrown back, the dam breaking, a torrent gushing. Then it passed, but the electronic pulsations that conjured the wild river did not cease. Put it on two. She ordered, put it on two! Marcus obliged and punched number two in. Jan settled down slightly. Her eyes were half open, her head to the side. It does more stuff, he said. But Jan didn't appear to be listening. She was lazing in the swirls and eddies now, savoring the slow ride. Marcus kissed her, and she flicked her tongue along his lips and teeth, then toward his throat, something she had not done in a long time. After she came again, she took him in her mouth, sucking and stroking as he played with the remote control, alternating between number one and number two. He thought about the tension he carried, 
and the tightness in his lumbar region. He worried about the long-term health effects of leading a double life. Shifting his weight to relieve the pressure on his back, he watched his wife as she concentrated on pleasing him. She was unburdened now, relaxed enough to have hotel sex on a weekday afternoon with her loving husband and a vibrating egg. <laughs> Emboldened, Marcus again pressed the remote control, and suddenly there was another human sound in the room, soft and feminine. Jan stopped what she was doing and looked at Marcus. What is that? The egg has a chip in it. The smoky croon of a well-known pop diva was emanating from Jan's interior. <laughs> The expression on her face, wonder entwined with delight, all coated in a gossamer membrane of the purest sensuality, was one with which Marcus was unfamiliar. It was a good thing she was drunk, he reflected, given that her vagina had started to sing. <laughs> As Marcus gazed at his wife, he forgot the marriage, the passage of the years, and how they had gone by in a wash of pregnancy, diapers, sleep deprivation, weekly carpool, shopping, cooking, cleaning, Endless, ever-regenerating bills, the ongoing responsibilities of adulthood, all that faded away in the soft afternoon light of the hotel room. They listened to the singer's breathy voice for a moment, and then both began to laugh freely, without inhibition or anxiety, the most innocent, happiest sound either of them had made in years. When she kissed him, he knew he had witnessed the dawning of the second phase of their marriage. Thank you very much.